While we're waiting for all the spoilers to drop from Murders at Carlock Manor, can I interest you in some spicy legacy deck lists? Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben Yu here for another legacy video. And I normally try to bring the spice on this channel, but today's deck list is... It, it's this spicy. We're Cyber Drive Awakener levels of spicy. So, as a legacy player or watcher of legacy content, you're probably familiar with our good friend Crater Hoof Behemoth, which has been a natural order slash big mana payoff card for a long time in decks like Elves. And the general idea is that if you put this into play, your previously non-threatening creatures become instant death. And Cyberdrive Awakener does this, well, not this exact same thing, but a similar thing, but for artifacts. So it turns other artifact creatures you control into flyers, and when it ETBs until end of turn, each non-creature artifact you control becomes an artifact creature with base power 4 and toughness 4. So... All those Mox Diamond, Chrome Mox sort of cards that you play out in the early game, maybe your Bobbles that currently aren't doing a ton, can just become something that instantly closes out the game. Okay, Phil, this sounds a little bit spicy. Okay, but this is part of like a Bug, Loam, Reanimator, Artifact, Midrange, Combo, Monstrosity, Rude by Connor Fulse, aka Loamer Boy, who has been responsible for pushing forward the like three to five color loam deck lists over the years, so you know it's going to be good. Now, when I say good, I do mean powerful. However, it comes with a caveat that Connor builds these decks that have a mana base that only its metaphorical mother could love. So let's let's take a look at this bad boy. So we are working essentially with a bug mid-range control deck list that has a couple of oops i win buttons built into it you can play this urza saga mid-range game with like ancient tombs or mox diamonds as acceleration you can be a wasteland deck and recur the wasteland via life from the loam or you have a small in tomb package with reanimate so you can do the grief reanimate nonsense that many decks in the format are doing, but you can also just oops accidentally make a giant Atraxa, uh, which you could hardcast with this mana base, like that's not crazy, or just get a Cyber Drive Awakener for an instant kill. So this is a, a very strange deck. You have a couple of cards in here that can funnel cards into your graveyard to help with your life from the loams and reanimates. Although, honestly, some portion of the time, you might be just taking a creature from your opponent's hand or pinging a small creature and then going and reanimating their creature as well. And if you look at the sideboard, there's, there's some spicy stuff in here, uh, including some highly targeted hate cards. Uh, and one that we saw on this channel recently uh, from some sort of Grixis control deck list from the Catacombs, which allows you to reanimate a creature card while also taking the initiative. And this has escape, so you can do it again. So what, what doesn't this deck have? Like, what, what is conceptually going to be the problem with this deck list? And, and we know the mana base is a little bit greedy to, to start with. Uh, we're going to kind of set that aside and just accept that. One of the issues that I kind of see with this deck is that it's not the best in terms of hard removal. This deck is kind of trying to win around stuff rather than truly answer cards. So you have a spell bomb to bounce stuff. You have a whale of the forgotten to bounce stuff. Wither Bloom and Bowmasters can kill smaller things. But as far as long-term removal, this deck is not the, the best at this. We don't have the, the Fatal Pushes, the Abrupt Decays, Dismember, Snuff Outs in Game 1, although there is some of that in the, in the sideboard. So this is, a, this is a spicy meatball here, and we are going to be hoping to, presenting, to be presenting the problems and having our opponent answer our problems 
rather than trying to be this hard control deck list like four color loam often is we're going to be this like weird urza saga bowmaster emery recursion grief deck until we accidentally win the game with something like Atraxa or Cyber Drive Awakener, or sometimes we'll even do something like do a Tezzeret Ultimate or just make a couple of 5-5s five out of Mox Diamonds. We've got options, and let's see how good those options actually end up being. And if you find you need to buy some cards to play this ridiculous pile, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your next order. Here we go, folks. Let's battle. Okay, so this is just straight up a fair Urza Saga hand that just wants to, like, Urza Saga, Spear, Ancient Tomb, activate, activate, search, Urza Saga, activate, activate, uh, opponent is dead, question mark, question mark, question mark. Uh, this is a game with basically zero agency now that I've kept this hand. And we hope that this is good against what my opponent is doing. Uh, this is something you just have to do. Sometimes when you're playing an Urza Saga deck, you just have to accept that sometimes you play hands that look like this. Duress. So my mind is currently on Dark Depths after seeing Urborg and Duress. And my opponent took my Bounce spell. <laughs> My opponent says, okay, interesting. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it is certainly that. Uh, let's add to the interesting pile uh, by griefing my opponent now uh, and hoping they're not on... Well, I guess I don't care if they're on reanimate. The, the Atrax is going to exile. <laughs> We've got our opponent all sorts of confused. All right. Was my read correct? Good news, bad news. Good news, my read is correct. My opponent is on depths. Bad news, they might goldfish me. I will be taking their pithing needle so my Urza Saga doesn't get taken out. The good news is that I have an Aether Spell Bomb coming. Do I have a Game 1 pithing needle? No. All right, so I have a post sideboard pithing needle though. Okay, so I'll activate this. Go to eighteen. I guess I need a blue mana, huh? Reanimate pithing needle? No, I can't reanimate a pithing needle. What the fuck am I talking about? Uh, okay, so if I activate Urza's Saga, I go to sixteen. I think I'm not not paying the life. A little awkward. Yeah, I think I'm not paying the life. It is blue to bounce, right? All right. I'm going to get an Aether Spell Bomb. I'll play a new Urza Saga. I'll equip my Shadow Spear, and this attack puts me to above 20 life, uh, which is important because I am not guaranteed to get blue mana. Uh, it's, a, I guess, a good thing I took that pissing needle another turn cycle ago, because this is one of my primary outs here. All right, so my opponent is just going to go ahead and do this now and play around Wasteland, which is very smart. Oh? Fuck! That's so bad. My basic land situation like? Okay, I do have more basic lands. How am I killing this thing if I lose Aether Spell Bomb? Ah, uh, Karak, no, no, Karakas. We win through. I don't have a Traxa to put in play anymore. Life's bad. I think I'm taking a draw. Bowmasters is not doing it. Another reanimate. So I'll play a land. I'll pass turn. I'll get hit for 20, go to two. And then I have a way to make this not indestructible. I guess I could draw Gris. Sure. Take 20. I'll activate this using my opponent's uh, Urborg. 
If I make another one of these, but I don't think I'm on any outs anymore. Like I can deal 9, 10, 11. Yeah, I, I think I'm just short here, so I think I don't show my opponent another card. 12 with Orcish Bowmasters. Damn. So what do I have to bring in here? Pithing Needle is reasonable. Opposition Agent is reasonable. That's probably about it. I could do some things that deal with opposing Pithing Needles, like Terra Sunder. I might do that. Leovold has some utility. What's bad? Bowmasters is not going to be fantastic, although it may ping opposing Bowmasters. Or reanimate is a thing. I probably end up pulling like one of the fatties. I think I'm going to keep this one. It flies and is lifelink. Both of those are super relevant keywords. I guess these kill Hex and <laughs> Mages. That's not nothing. Look, Iden Lantern is not the most important thing in the world. Tezzeret is slow. That gives me three. We'll see how this feels. Um, Mox Diamond, discard Boseju. Cycle Troll, get a land. Mox Diamond, discard Control. Discard, all right, the land from Troll. I don't, I don't do Grist turn one. I have really good mana acceleration. I do turn two Grist. Unless I get discarded, in which case I do nothing. I don't know if this hand is a trap or not. Like, if I treat this a different way and, like, Grief Pitch Troll, this still just leaves me with two mana sources. Um, I don't think this has a path to victory. Like, too often, Grist doesn't meaningfully interact with my opponent. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Keep this... Uh, I'm going to value fetching proper lands here and get rid of Boseju. And now I just decide whether I want to Atraxa or Double Grief. I think I want to Double Grief. Uh, what's my important secondary color here? Green, maybe? So let's Grief pitch to Entomb. Okay, so how do I punch a hole in this? I get to take two of these cards. I think I'm going to pull the Hex Mage as one of them. Reanimate the Grief. And then... I think I want to take the Crop Rotation. Crop Rotation, Elvis... Elv <clears throat> Excuse me. Elvish Spirit Guide together is just rough. It means my opponent can tap out for stuff. I'm hoping they don't just blind turn one Pithing Needle on Wasteland. Um, it's really good if they do. But I don't think I am supposed to go down the card of not interacting with the rest of their hand in order to stop the Pithing Needle. Because I think some portion of the time they use the Spirit Guide to Sylvan Scrying, and then I can just go ahead and wasteland a relevant land a little bit later in this game. That's a good draw. Now... I think I'm just going to play this Verdant Catagombs and pass with the intention of fetching blue mana. This Ottawara is now going to become the way that I get rid of a Merit Lage that is put into play. And I just kind of accept that Pithing Needle on Wasteland happens. It could go on Urza Saga or Spellbomb. Like, my opponent's got options here. I want blue mana. I need black, black, or green, green. Not really. We'll see what my opponent needles. It is the spell bomb. Nice. So that means my wasteland is now live. When I choose to fire this off is a bit interesting. I can just take it now. But crop rotation gets me, or my opponent can like play around it better later. I think I'm gonna do it now before, like, hard cast once upon a time is a thing if I let them untap. And I've already taken one crop rotation. Stifle? Sure. 
You got it. Aug is relevant. I am a loam deck. Okay. Um, I am on track to Ottawara, the Merit Lage. Like, we're, we're doing okay. Just grief tempo dot deck. Just chugging along, doing its thing. There's some bird outside my window just absolutely losing its mind. You got it. Take your 2020. I'll go ahead and fetch a tropical island here. Uh, we're going to keep blue, blue, green, green in mind for Uro purposes. Lol. 2020s go home. My opponent now is left with one land in play. Now, I don't, I don't have a lot of relevant stuff here. Like, this spell bomb is off. It's somewhat unlikely that I actually answer the Pithing Needle. But hopefully... We have bought enough time that I can get the remaining three grief hits. Also, I'm at 13 life. What the fuck happened to me? Reanimate happened. That's right. <laughs> you may take my spell bomb. Uh, so this thought sees actually puts my opponent in range of lethal, so they concede. They're just taking that information. Okay, and this is the cost of playing a deck that looks like this, right? So. We have no black mana despite having three lands, so Entomb is not live. Neither are the Opposition Agent and the Grief. Um, Opposition Agent is a very relevant card in this matchup, although it's kind of slow here. We're forced to take a mulligan on this one. Oh shit, okay. Uh, Mox Diamond, discard Urza Saga, play Underground Sea, Entomb, reanimate on turn one. Yes. So am I keeping life from the loam or grief beyond this? The grief is insane if I draw another black card. Atraxa probably gets me another black card. It's just weird if my opponent duresses me or thought seizes me on turn one. I think I'm going to keep the life from the loam. But like this, this Mox Diamond is both getting me double black and getting me my initial green source. So like... It, it's weird. Okay, that's nice. I think we're going to go ahead and Mox Diamond. Discard Urza Saga. <laughs> I, uh, my opponent is so lost. And uh, rightfully so. <laughs> um, we're going to get Atraxa. I'm going to attempt to reanimate Atraxa. No! That's so rude. Okay, so hopefully I will life from the loam my way out of this from here. My opponent lost their green mana to do that, which may or may not be relevant. Oh my god. Wasteland. Wasteland your thespian stage. Life from the Loam, target Wasteland. This is going to put opponent in a tough spot. I, I just have this forever, and they've blown their Bojuka Bog already. This is, this is one of the best examples of like the Brewer's Advantage that I've ever seen, right? Uh, absolutely dredging. As my opponent does not have any idea what's happening... I am going to take out Dark Depths here. I'm going to leave myself, my opponent with a mana-producing land... I do not want my opponent to go Urborg, Vampire Hexmage, as that's one of the few ways that I could lose the game from this otherwise just incredibly strong position. And the goal is to just keep blowing up lands till we can't blow up lands no more. Eh? Huh? Alright, so our opponent didn't have the Vampire Hexmage, but like that is an incredibly relevant land. Um, I will dredge. We're going to put Wasteland back into my hand every time we are capable of doing so, just absolutely immediately. And this will be digging towards something like an Uro. At some point, I will probably stop putting secondary lands into my hand. Did I play a land that turn? Might not have actually made a land drop that turn. No, I, I replayed the Wasteland. JK. Okay, so now I get to take out this bog. My opponent thought seizes. They get an awful lot of nothing. 
I don't remember whether or not we've shown them that we picked up all of these. I think I might have drawn one of them. Hey, there's the Uro. So we take this out. A Life from the Loam. I'll pick up the Wasteland and the Urza Saga. But I'll leave the Misty in there for our Uro count. And call it a turn. So from my opponent's point of view, they would like to find a Pithing Needle and Pithing Needle Wasteland. But as soon as they do something like that, I just pivot into Uro or Urza Saga, and I'm still pretty far ahead. <laughs> my opponent says, well, the deck looks like it's made to beat on depths. We're, we're doing okay for ourselves, I'm not going to lie. I am going to go ahead and drop a fetch land here. I guess I should fetch now or now adjacent because of Stifle. Yeah. Pick up a Trop. Fantastic. I don't need to dredge. Bobble's kind of whatever. Let's get an Uro into play. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So we're going above 20 here, which is a magic number. Um, now let's take a real card. I'll put a safety wasteland into play as one of the few ways that we can lose from here is our opponent assembling something that can produce a Dark Depths token in a single turn. Uh, crop rotation. Uh, they've got goodies over there. Take out the crop rotation. And let's take a redraw. Leyline of the Void. Understood. A reasonable card that's just a little slow here. I don't think I need to put Life from the Loam back in my hand. Oh, we have, we're on another grief. Sure. All right, we have gotten the, uh, the GGs in chat here. Uh, that was a great first round showing from this deck. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com. It's just the best place to keep your online deck lists, and it's also a great tool if you're a competitive tournament player. Uh, what I'm showcasing here is its compare feature. You can take two deck lists, plug in links to both of them, and then see which cards are unique to deck list A, which cards are unique to deck list B, and which cards are shared with both of them. And you can do this both with the main deck and the sideboard. If you are looking to fine tune a deck list, this is a great way to do that. All right. I'm missing some colors. I think this is still a keep. Like, Currency Converter plus Troll is notably strong. I'm immediately fucking terrified. This is not wastelandable. This means Blood Moon could be on the horizon. Uh, just... And we don't have very much true removal. I, I think I'm in bad shape. And we'll just kind of see which, which flavor we're looking at here. Uh, notably, I could leave up Swamp Cycling for a basic Swamp, but I don't think basic Swamp saves me if my opponent moons. So I think I'm just going to kind of accept that it is quite strong. So it probably gets a Sticker Goblin, unless my opponent has Sticker Goblin but no payoff, which would be a little weird, but not unprecedented. Yeah, okay, there's the Sticker Goblin. So, oh, hello. This is actually not too bad now. The way that you beat these Name Sticker Goblin decks is actually with Wasteland. So, I'm going to Mox Diamond. I think I'm printing, or discarding Underground Sea, which now that can go under Currency Converter to give me another mana. I'm going to now hold up my mana. I am probably going to just Bowmaster this Matron. <laughs> Never mind, I found a different thing to Bowmaster. I'm going to try to kill this and hope that my opponent doesn't go, like, land Sack Sack. Like, I can take out the Matron in response, but, like, the Skirk Prospector is the real problem. Longer term. It is a spirit guide, and I am punished for my line. Bowmasters doesn't kill a name sticker goblin. Okay. Let's see how bad it gets. A medium roll. That is a ringleader. 
Let's see what happens here. Holy fuck, okay. Um, actually, this might not be that bad. Okay. So I just, like, ping this, double block this, leave my opponent, hopefully with the rest of the stuff stranded in hand. I could troll cycle, make a 2-2, block this, and then ping this on my own turn. Let's do that. Um, I'm going to grab the actual bayou. Put the troll in graveyard to make the 2-2. Take the block. And the primary reason that we want to take out as many creatures as possible is that, like, we know Battlecry Goblin is coming. So, two mana. King Skirk. My opponent should sack it so that I don't get a token. Uh, they did not. Let's play this as my land drop. Fetch. We're going to keep ignoring Blood Moon. Uh, my opponent is unlikely to be playing that in game one. And then at some point, I'll cash this in for a card. I can do it immediately if I want to give up the treasure. But I don't, in theory, need it immediately. Wasteland can take out this Cavern of Souls, uh, which is great. And we want to aggressively trade bodies in combat. I don't know that I like that attack. If my opponent waits a little bit, like next turn they can pump mana into this and then always get a 1-1 one, one token. And then the combats end up being a like, little tiny bit better for them. I don't know their entire hand, though. So, treasure... Entomb. Entomb can get life from the loam. I think I'm just going to start with a regular card draw, though, and see what I turn up. Reef? Eh? Like, I'm trying to leave cards stranded in hand, so I don't think I'm attacking via discard. Let's loot. Shadow Spear Grief is interesting. I'm going to get rid of the Entomb. This will give me a 2-2 Rogue in a bit. Take out Cavern. I don't think I need to cast Shadow Spear immediately. I don't think I need to show that card yet and have my opponent plan around it. I'm going to go ahead and take some damage. All right, opponent does not have further lands. That is great for Phil fans. Let's play a Grief. Dismiss this. So, at this point, my opponent concedes, uh, which I guess is reasonable. I don't think this one's over yet, though. Once I have the Shadow Spear, things do swing more in my favor, though. So, Pithing Needle can be used for Broadside. I have a bunch of cards that have text. Hydroblast and Blue Blast are good. And me reanimating their creatures doesn't make a lot of sense. So, Soul Guide Lantern, not great. Aether Spellbomb, I don't really want to be bouncing the goblins. Let's say no to that. Similarly, I guess this bounce is not great. I want to be killing stuff, and I have some ability to bring in things that kill. If I get an Entomb... I probably want to be getting a Traxa. A Wire Might can probably go. Leaves the Urza Saga package a little slim. I think that's fine. The Mox Opal maybe goes at this stage. It's nice for if I get Blood Mooned, but the window for that is kind of weird because I like probably need two Urza Saga activations for Mox Opal to be on in the first place. I'm going for 7 in, meaning I need one more cut. Tezzeret is slow. I could see that going. I think this hand has no plan. I don't have Reanimate for Entomb. I don't have Wasteland for Life from the Loam. I don't have a fast discard thing for Currency Converter. And Witherbloom Command doesn't necessarily kill the things that my opponent is putting into play. Let's take a look at the six. Uh, 
Yikes. Okay. So if I can wasteland my opponent out of the game, this hand has a plan. Do I keep this? Let's assume that I usually lose the game where I'm on the draw. And if this works, cool. If it doesn't, that's what game three is for. But I think a decent portion of the time, my opponent just like does a turn one soul land plus red source on turn one and just like gets ahead on board in a way that's really hard for me to catch up on since I don't have very much real removal. So some small portion of the time, I can steal a game with a wasteland. And oh, yeah, so like this is the same as last time where I just wasteland. And then hopefully I keep a sticker goblin stranded in my opponent's hand for a little while. Now if they have a second soul land, they have a second soul land, and it's very, very, very good. Otherwise, it's a how many times as much as I teach you this lesson, old man, moment. Get him. All right. Do you have another soul land? No? <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'll happily take one damage. That is A-OK. -okay. That's a lot of Urza's Saga. Especially a lot of Urza Saga for a Magus of the Moon matchup in post-board games. Okay, that one doesn't get wastelanded. I wonder if my opponent had that one last turn and just, like, tried to save three life. Uh, I, I just don't know from this side of the table. Uh, that is too slow to matter. Uh, save one point of life, thin land from deck, increase graveyard count for Uro. Also can technically fetch a basic swamp, which is relevant. Third land? Fuck. So that is my opponent's fourth land, so meaning my double wasteland is going to get powered through here. Uh, that is a Magus. This is why I played Delta. Get basic swamp. And while I'm not dead to Magus, I believe you all can see the three copies of Urza's Saga in my hand. And if you're not familiar with how this works, with Magus of the Moon in play, Urza's Saga goes directly to jail. And by jail, I mean your graveyard. You do not get to pass go. <laughs> uh, that is interesting. Let's go buy you pass. I probably end up snuffing out the Magus of the Boon, but there's this thing. I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to let the Namesticker Goblin trigger resolve and hope that my Plague Engineer can combat whatever is about to happen. Fuck, it's the high roll, so Muxus can happen. That's fine. Broadside is bad. F. Okay. So... I can kill Broadside, taking 4, go to 12, take 7 damage, go to 5, play Plague Engineer, and go from there. My Plague Engineer is just not safe with Broadside around. So unfortunately, we're doing this. I take a gajillion D in combat, and... Oh, actually, am I just dead even if I play Plague Engineer? No, because the other things shrink. Okay, never mind. JK. Goblin. So this gets rid of the Goblin Matron. These become 1-1s. One and then I end up in this sort of awkward position. Uh, sure, that's fine. 4 mana. Uh, opponent could mock. Fuck. That's so good. My opponent gets to double pump into Battlecry Goblin and then present lethal. Yeah. All right, we played a real game of Magic. And now I get to try again. Oh, I forgot the chill. My bad. Um, honestly, the chill might not have been great on the draw anyway. How do I feel about the griefs? Do I want all four? Do I go down to three griefs? Do I go down one Emery? Not gonna super miss Emery. I think that's reasonable. Uh, swamp cycle for Bayou saves this, I guess. Hydroblast for first play. Yeah, I I think this is actually okay. It makes me a little uncomfortable. I think this is fine. I can entomb or life from the loam. On turn two, and life from the loam 
on turn three to get back a wasteland. Uh, we're not in crazy people territory here. Okay, I, I get to wasteland that. Like, that is actively fine. Troll cycle. I think I have to get Bayou for my colors rather than a basic. Because I want to be able to cast Life from the Loam very specifically. Nice. I'll wasteland in my opponent's upkeep. Not that it probably matters in this matchup, but... Weird Simeon Spirit Guide things have happened before, and they will happen again. That is a wastelandable land. Reanimate. Okay, we, we might have a backdoor to other winds arising as well. Oh, that's fine. So this doesn't get to cast Entomb, so we get to just like sweetly go Entomb Reanimate in one go, unfortunately. So I'm going to drop a Bayou. I'll pass the turn, but I'll have Hydroblast available. So the goal is, like, maybe opponent drops a new land to cast something, and then I just Hydroblast whatever they play, end of turn in Tomb, and then reanimate. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, we will just counter that. And I'll put an Atraxa in play. And Atraxa buys me a lot of time and takes a lot of pressure off me. Cool, I hit another land drop as well. Reanimate Atraxa. Um, I should not have played my land. That was a mistake on my end. Uh, instant. Sorcery. Creature. Land? Instant sorcery. Creature. Land. Done? Oh, enchantment as well. So now are so good. Uh, yeah, if, so if I don't play the land, I can play Bowmasters in this turn if I want, but I think I'm just pitching Bowmasters to Grief. So let's Grief pitch Bowmasters. See what's going on over there. Uh, we will take the Name Sticker Goblin. That allows my opponent to do the most nonsense at the same time. And then I will Life from the Loam, returning multiple Wastelands at the same time. So now I have Snuff Out for Broadside or whatever that comes next, backed by a lot of nonsense. Uh, Rabble Master is fine. My opponent is about to learn <laughs> a very harsh lesson, which is that if you play a pre-combat Goblin Rabble Master into a Life Linker, it fucking sucks, because your Goblins are forced to attack, and it just nets your opponent a whole bunch of life. Uh, we just bullied our opponent. <laughs> So I I typed sup nerd in the chat and Brian immediately fired off ready to die in all capital letters. So uh, it's it's gonna be a good video. So turn one, Mox Diamond discard Ottawa. Uh, you know what? You can watch me do it live. This is fucking hot. This is some like sexy illegal gaming shit right here. Discard Underground Sea. Cast Life from the Loam. Two targets. Yaw. Yeah. Third Mox Diamond. Uh, discard Ottawara. Play Underground Sea. Mishra's Bobble. See what's going on over there. Uh, Polluted Delta, a little ambiguous. I'll pass the turn. I think from the Bobble, I'm just going to go ahead and take a natural draw, and I can dredge later. Uh, maybe I want this in my hand for weird graveyard hate. That just happens to be there. Oh yeah, there's a saga. Good shit. Three Mox Diamonds on turn one. Um, admittedly feels pretty good. Saga, Ottawara, Forest. For two mana. And then we just start being an Urza Saga gamer. While hopefully going and finding interaction for maybe Cephalid Breakfast combo. Uh, this is kind of a called shot, but Brian and I were both out of town and are catching up on recording. So if I were Brian right now, I would be playing a deck that's fast to record with, and combo does the ticket. So this is just my zero information called shot, what might Brian be playing. I'm going to look for a wasteland. There's a wasteland. Life from the Loam. 
I'll take all three targets this time. Yeah. Nice. I'll wasteland. I could do it now for stifle-based reasons. Or, like, I could do it later because of stifle-based reasons, but I'm just going to fire it off right now. So here's the fetch for the brainstorm. They do have basics. Another one. And we're just being a saga gamer. I don't dredge this time. I already have another Urza Saga in hand, so just no need. I think I am going to get Soul Guide Lantern rather than Currency Converter. I think Currency Converter is the best thing in the vacuum, but I don't know. I have breakfast vibes, yeah. So, what are we doing? <laughs> we're, uh, we're having fun in chat today. I think I'm gonna board. I, I think I'm gonna hard board for breakfast. I want Pithing Needle. Leovold's fine. Maybe I'm a coward. I think I might play things that overlap with breakfast and a reasonable blue deck. So, like, this could hit a shark, this could hit a, a Stoneforge or whatever pretty reasonably, and like maybe I don't go Leyline deep. Let's take the spell bomb out. What are the other modes on Whale? Discard. Let's take this out. I think I want the Grief Scam stuff. I think this is going to go... Because I'm trying to board in five cards, so I'm still going to need two cuts from here. An Emery. One Grief, maybe? I'm trying to hedge a bit. Uh, yeah, this is this is fine. Sure. That doesn't get wastelanded. I'm unsure how quickly to go for Urza Saga nonsense. Drop. Are you? Drop. Let's go Mox Diamond. Discard one Urza Saga. And Life from the Loam. See if this it eats like a Force of Negation or anything. It does not. So then I get Grist to help fuel Life from the Loam, and I decide whether or not I'm dredging for Wasteland. It's like not a thing that I'm most excited to do. Um, we'll just kind of see how this shakes out. Okay, am I gonna... a Stalactite Stalker? Sure. Not Breakfast. My Pithing Needle is definitely worse. I think I'm willing to dredge once and see if I hit Wasteland. I do. I, I think I'm going to go ahead and target it and take my opponent off the land and take some amount of damage in the meantime. Just kind of knowing that my Urza Saga tokens and Grist can probably end up overpowering a Stalactite Stalker. Like, the card's good. Like, it, it's going to hit for like 2, then 3, then 4. Like, it, it's going to scale up relatively quickly. Ooh. Don't love that. Aldra is spooky, and Wrist doesn't save me from that. No dredge. This, Stoneforge, this Stoneforge is going to bully me. Wrist is probably just buying me 5 life. I think that's how I'm going to view that card. Like, it's just going to save me from a Cauldra hit. And I'm going to work towards Haywire Might. Um, I hope it's still in my deck. It is. So the goal is Haywire Might the Cauldra in the slightly longer term. Yep. Uh, and notably there is Menace here, so this token doesn't do a ton. Ooh. So I need a much different configuration. Sure. So I use this on the bigger Stalactite Stalker and use Cauldra, or use Haywire Might to answer Cauldra. That's my plan. Uh, and because this does have another ability, I'm going to do this now. Uh, and this, al <clears throat> this also helps with not triggering Descend for the other one. Ooh, pitching Sauron's Ransom. Understood. 
Does that effectively leave me dead? Five, eight, nine. The next swing is rough. So I don't block five, eight, nine, ten, go to four. I just kind of have this issue where like the second stalactite stalker can kill this and make it so that my Urza Saga token that I make doesn't actually profitably block. Um, so like that's a thing. I guess the Emery helps with that a bit. So this is a 2-2. Two, two. I'm about to turn it into a 3-3 three, three temporarily. A wire might this land drop play Emery. See what we mill. Milled an Ottawara. Uh, we're going to pass turn. And hopefully I'm alive. No, don't cast spells. Uh, that's not great. So I lose this token, making blocks harder. Let's see if I can wiggle through this somehow. So the cauldra is gone. I could do something like... The multi-blocks are weird. I probably have to double block this. But it's a 3-3, three, three, and I'm about to lose Haywire Might. So that would mean blocking like that, do something like a block like this, end up taking 3 damage and being alive? Sounds... maybe not good. Sounds like it's happening. So I'll exile this Cauldra. Gain some life, take it out, lose Emery, keep a Construct token, be at three. Still very much in danger. This grows. Pass life from the loom. Don't get to Ottawa afterwards. I'm going to take a live draw. Underground C. So I have four incoming damage. Can't gain life. Ottawa is one mana short of being live. That'll do. Got run over. Now I can sideboard properly. I know what's up. So I want... Well, I did have my... Oh, yeah, there it is. I was viewing Dismember as a one-mana spell. So I want Snuff Out and Dismember. Terra Sunder exiles, so like that becomes very reasonable. Plague Engineer on Orc is reasonable. Grief becomes better because... I don't have that many actual removal spells for a Stoneforge. Like, I could do this, but eh. Can Pithing Needle Stoneforge? That's okay. This Soul Guide Lantern is less good than I thought it was. Tezzeret's probably slow. Put this in. Emery Haywire Might is cute. We almost got that assembled last time. But maybe we just let this go? I could go down on the Grief Reanimate nonsense. I still think it's pretty strong here, though. I have a Mox Diamond. So I could Mox Diamond, pitch Urza Saga, play Urza Saga, play Mox Opal. Not really have enough mana to activate. I can Entomb for Life from the Loam. This hand, like, very easily loses to a Counterspell on this card. And Entomb's scary enough that, like, my opponent might just fire off a counter on it. I think I'm going to ship this one. I think this is risky. Mox Diamond, pitch Urza Saga, play land, Bowmaster into Bowmaster into Grist. That's fine. Would I rather keep Dismember over either a Bowmaster or a Grist? Probably. Let's keep one Bowmaster. Land drop, Mox Diamond, pitch Saga, pass turn. So the nice thing is that if my opponent fetches and plays Stalactite Stalker, I just have... Oh, fuck, I clicked through. Um, anyway, I just have Bowmasters for it. I'm just going to fetch to thin the deck. I'm going to hold Bowmasters for another turn cycle. As weird as that sounds. Like, I missed a window to play the card properly, so I'm just going to hold it and try to get better value. Ooh. Not bad. I think I'm just going to play Misty. Like, I have spells that I want to cast. I also think... Just thinking about it more, that maybe I'm not supposed to Bowmasters in response to the Ponder because I have so few removal spells in my deck, so just using this as a removal spell on a Stalactite Stalker matters a lot. Ooh. You got it. Unfortunately, like, now my opponent knows to play around Bowmasters on Stalactite Stalker. 
so they can try to play it on a turn where they can like fetch and I don't have two mana up. So like things things are gonna get a little weird here. Yeah, I'm le I'm legitimately unsure about that like bowmaster ponder situation. Uh, so my opponent didn't descend. So this is a one one. All right. Ooh. Let's do that. I can hit the open card here in case something weird like Spell Snare would happen. Surely there is a counter spell. Surely there is a counter spell. Yeah. Okay, so now I think I'm okay paying the life to dismember this. It's possible I am supposed to take a point of damage from this as to not get blown out by a Stoneforge Mystic. Let's do that. So that's gone. I, I think I'm just willing to take a little bit of damage from this to not commit the dismember yet. Yep, yep, yep. Perfectly happy taking the one. 18. Okay, that's fine. Aldra. And now I get this choice of like, am I playing around days or force of negation? I think I'm playing around days. Bro. We're reasonable. I'm not ready for that yet. Let's attempt a four life dismember off Urza Saga. And then I'll fetch. Grabbing like a bayou. I'm okay getting this going, I think. I don't care if this one gets dazed. Like, it's cool if it doesn't, but it is not the end of the world. The plus here gets my fifth card in Graveyard for the purposes of bringing back an Uro, which is nice. I also might not be Uroing. Uh, it's possible that I just end up doing Urza Saga nonsense. Uh, yep, this is fine. Again, Menace. Lion Sash. That sure does make my Uro worse. I think I'm firing this off on the Lion Sash now. Now let's just Grist here. A Swords to Plowshares right here can be a little awkward for me. Oh uh, yeah, sure, that's fine. I'll sacrifice this. I'm going to take out the Lion Sash. Since I do just have this Uro coming in the not-too-distant future. I'm going to drop Verdant and just pass the turn and use my mana for Urza's Saga in the short term. Brainstorm's fine. A very fast shuffle. So this has potentially put the Cauldra back into the deck. Be fetched by another Stoneforge later. Fine taking the damage. 11. Another Stalactite Stalker. He's descending. They are descending. Go ahead and make a critter here. Those can scale. I am going to go ahead and just fetch another relevant land out of my deck. Let's grab like an Underground Sea maybe. Oh, I was kind of planning on fetching that. That's a little weird. That actually costs me a mana. Huh. Okay. I mean, I'll make my thing. Mox Opal? Mox Opal gives me that extra mana back. Okay. Shadow Spear. Equip. And attempt to attack for 6 lifelink. All right, that's a pretty important connection. Game's not over. Okay. On its last card might be Force of Will here, if they're playing out the fifth land. A double block. There's some weird sacrificing things that could happen. I think I'm just firing both into combat before spending any of my mana. And we'll see what happens. You could flash in a Bowmaster. Okay, it is just chump mode. All right, it is chump and shrink. I'm fine with that. So now I'm okay firing off an Uro. If the last card is Bowmasters, I just Bowmasters the Bowmasters. Yeah, I'll fuck yeah, I'll put an Urza Saga into play. I'm good with that. And I'm holding up a Bowmasters for end of turn. Hey, we're 3-0 oh now, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't think this hand does anything. Like, I can Entomb for a Life from the Loam to, like, have Urza Sagas forever, but I'm not accelerating out that Urza Saga. 
given how good like mox diamond based hands are i think i can just do better this is better this is just turn one grief reanimate and then urza's saga or wasteland grief pitch bowmasters reanimate is the plan am i keeping wasteland to help back up the grief tempo play I don't think so. I think I'm just going to keep access to both of my colors and an Urza Saga rather than put myself further in the make this grief go all the way basket. What are we working with over there? Oh. Nick fit. So these veteran explorers can't block until there's two of them. I sacrifice a decent number of permanents. I probably need to work through these mayhem devils. I think I'm going to end up taking both of those. I could reanimate one of these. I think it's better to just take the second Mayhem Devil. Let's grab a Bayou. I want to leave the basics in my deck because I'm going to get a chance to fetch them out later. Reanimate my Grief. And send Mayhem Devil number two to the Shadow Realm. I do have some ways of messing with the graveyard in the deck. Got the fake Relic of Progenitus that I'm forgetting the name of. That's a little bit of a miss. Hopefully not that big of a deal. And it. Oddly, I'd kind of like to draw a Wasteland. Like, I know I bottomed one, but like taking my opponent off of mana is pretty solid right now. For sure, sure. John mana confirmed, but, you know, we already knew that from this. Sure, that's fine. A third? All right, no attack. They're leaving back the possibility of blocking. Um, I could push three points of damage this turn if I wanted to play this card, but I don't think I am going to bother. I, I think no attack. I don't think I want to give my opponent four basic lands right now. We'll wait. Get something like a Shadow Spear involved. Uh, yeah, sure, that's fine. Just a forest. Forest is not Phyrexian Tower. Happy about that. Aw. They've got something else to think about. What is that something? Dismember? Probably not crop rotation. Oh, I see. Green Sun for Dryad Arbor. Yeah, that's reasonable. It's awkward to use a Green Sun at this stage of the game because, like, my opponent wants to use that Green Sun for gas but I'm not killing their veteran explorers, so they might need to develop their mana to get to five mana for a Titania or something like that. So I'd really love to draw something like Bowmasters to ping that. Mox, Diamond, sure. I need to look at my targets here. Shadow Spear for Trample is interesting. Currency Converter is interesting. I think I am... Making critters here. What to do after this is a little more complicated. Shadow Spear for Trample is legitimately interesting. This might be a currency converter grind game. Soul Guide Lantern has some text. Ox Opal is not crazy. Let's take currency converter. I'm fine with a Mox Diamond. Mox Diamond has currency converter synergy. So, like, I discard this. Yes. Tap this to immediately get the treasure. Play Aether Spellbomb. I think I'm just going to bounce the Dryad Arbor. I think I'm just going to send that out of play, pass the turn. And then when all three of these can attack, maybe I start thinking about attacking into these Veteran Explorers. I don't... I don't quite conceptually have... I don't know quite how I'm getting through all of this. I'm trying to keep my opponent spider. Okay. I'm sure this is one of the legendary spiders of some kind. What is this? I sacrifice another creature. When you do, destroy target non-land permanent. Okay, this was not on my radar. Okay. A currency converter. How dare you? I believe I have three total basics in my deck. No, two? Two basics in my deck. This is a decent amount of life. 
There's also a three. Ooh, snuff out. Sure. That grows this to a, or shrinks this to a two, two rather. Got it. So grief attack is now reasonable because I can put all of the damage on Skyfisher Spider. So masters, question mark. I'm playing it anyway. I need more stuff. Uh, Tezzeret is interesting. Not more interesting than Uro. Um, yeah, I think I'm going for this attack. 3-3 three, three with reach. Gain some life when it dies. That's fine. This is uh, one of those things where ordering blockers becomes super, super, super relevant. Uh, which often doesn't matter. But yeah, opponent does not accept the block. Now next turn I can Tezzeret and make a 5-5. Five five and have some relatively dangerous attacks. We're looking to dodge some big dumb haymaker. Which we might have, we might do because my opponent shuffled, or like shuffled in their green sun when they got Dryad Arbor. So we may have dodged a bullet. Emery. Emery is one mana. Do I want to Tezzeret attack? Or just put an Uro into play? I think I want to put the Uro into play. This maybe means that I don't Emery immediately. Uh, one, two, three, four. I want to leave Spellbomb in there for Emery. Hitting a blue land would be clutch. Wasteland. That's a thing. How do I feel about attacks? It gives my opponent more mana, but not the most relevant thing in the world right now. Like, if they double block, I take two bodies out of play. Makes Uro better the following turn. I could just Wasteland Dryad Arbor, and then the double block is better for me. Let's do that. Send Grief in. I do see the double block. I'll kill the spider. Gives my opponent a decent amount of life. I don't think that's that much of a problem, though. Like, I can play Tezzeret and attack for 13 damage next turn. While also playing Emery. It's another one of these fucking spiders, man. Okay. So this can slow me down. Like, they can junk the Veteran Explorer, get two lands, take out my Uro. Yeah, and this time I don't have basics to get. No basics. So my opponent is hellbent, though. One, two, three, four, five. Three cards in Graveyard. I can almost Emery into Uro immediately. This swamp is keeping me from doing that. So instead, I'm going to play Tezzeret. Let's see, if I make this a base 5-5, five five, it still has this ability. It becomes a 7-7. Seven seven. I also could plus. Um, let's just make this bigger, though. Yeah. I want to Emery pre-combat in case something gets weird. What are we mailing? Uh, the Aether Spell Bomb in my graveyard is uh, very good, by the way. And it. Skyfisher Spider is really cool. This is, uh, this is good technology. I like it. Opponent has their Yu Gi Oh moment where they have to believe in the heart of the cards and rip a big bomb here. Uh, that's just a 3 1. When it is dealt damage, choose an opponent at random. Deals damage equal to its power to that player unless they sacrifice a non-token creature. Got it. So, let's Aether Spell Bomb. Cast that off Swamp. We'll go ahead and play a Soul Guide Lantern. I'll take some, probably land out of the graveyard. I'm going to Tezzeret minus on the Mox Diamond. I'm going to go ahead and Aether Spell Bomb a creature back to hand. Go to combat. Force the block on the spider. This is fine. Now, exile the graveyard. Don't misclick it. Opponent gains no life off this trigger. I leave them at one. 
They have a creature that they can play from hand. I bounce it. I have three lethal attackers. Uh, that took a while, but it was a pretty dominant showing. What am I doing? Opposition agent is really good. Dismember is good. Snuff out is maybe good. A lot of my opponent's creatures that matter are going to be black. Uh, Leyline of the Void, apparently pretty good. From the Catacombs, not crazy. Plague Engineer, not crazy. Blue Elemental Blast, not crazy. A Wire Might can probably go... I've cut this like every round. I don't know if I'm right or wrong in doing so. How do I feel about grief? Like, how important is it for me to take something from my opponent's initial hand? It feels like these games go on for a long time. Reanimating my opponent's creatures might end up being better than reanimating my own. That's weird if I board in ley lines. Yeah, I think I'm going down on this grief reanimate nonsense and playing closer to a control role. So, like, play ley lines, play the blue elemental blast, opposition agent dismember. This, this is from the catacombs better than one of my other win conditions. What about Leovold? Just Leovold for Mayhem Devil, Triggers, and Friends. That's not crazy. Uh, let's try this. I'm going to keep my hand. It's a little up in the air what direction I take this hand. Because, like, I could be Fair Urza Saga. I could be kind of controlling. I can Wasteland an initial mana source. I've, I've got some ability to pivot, depending on what happens in the first turn cycle or so. This almost certainly means that I just wasteland after my opponent takes a, a starting mulligan. I'm not going to play the Mox Diamond on turn one, because I'm not 100% sure what land I want to discard. Like, there's timelines where I don't start activating an Urza Saga for a while. And so that is the land that I discard, because I have, like a bunch of colored pips that I'm going to need to use. I can uh I can bounce that out of play if things get a little weird, but that's like not the best for me to do so. I'm going to hold it up. Let's put the fetch in the yard play underground sea so that I'm holding up the whale. Um this can this can be a big turn cycle for my opponent. And they don't care about attacking into a Bowmaster like they want the Veteran Explorer to die. But, like, we can take death by a thousand cuts. Oh, shit. That's just their only land. Understood. So do I use this to bounce Veteran Explorer? Or make them just naturally discard a card? No. Oh, this is a fucking sorcery. This card sucks. This is so bad. <laughs> Alright, I should have just returned Wasteland. I'll do that now. Look at the top three. Oh no, this this isn't Witherbloom Command. I guess I am looking for. I guess I'm looking for a wasteland or a life from the loam that accomplishes a similar thing. Um, where do the rest of these go? Graveyard. Put the Od Odawara to my hand. Make a land drop and pass. Next turn, I can just play Leyline of the Void, and then Veteran Explorer isn't relevant anymore. So this is the big turn to dodge Veteran Explorer. Or not Veteran, uh, yeah, to dodge Veteran Explorer getting lands is what I meant. No attack? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Not sure why. There must be a reason. Like, my opponent attacked the previous turn into open mana, so... I don't know. This could get both sage or something. It doesn't. That's great for me. Veteran Explorer can take some swings. That's fine. Just getting away with fucking murder over here. Wasteland Trop. It just works. Human. Go. And Veteran Explorer's ability doesn't even trigger because it goes to exile. Does not hit the graveyard first. Should my opponent have mulliganed 2 5? Two lands and Veteran Explorer. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Is a great start to a hand. Um, I don't know quite what the rest looks like to say for sure. 
like maybe they're one thing away from really popping off and doing disgusting things, but you know, it's turn six, they have one land in play. Six cards stranded in hand. It seems to me like my opponent has greater agency if they mulligan again. But, you know, there's a lot of things that I don't get to see there. Um, that's very good. That's very, very good. Uh, actually. Yeah, so let's just attack for the three. Opponent's at 14. A life from the loam. With three targets, this still lets me hold up Ottawara and Urza's Saga. So it's fine. And after one dredge, I'm back on enough to play an Uro if need be. Err. Opponent needs some, some crazy stuff right now. Like pernicious deed level cards. They're more or less locked into getting a basic swamp with this fetch. Otherwise, like, I have two known wastelands in hand. Well, I'm wrong. Uh, sure. Is this worth doing? I'm gonna say no. Pick up an underground sea. Also, I haven't mapped it out, but my opponent is very close to dead. If not dead. If I activate this at end of turn, the token starts as a 3 3. I don't dredge. Take a natural draw. Put these on the stack. Activate the one that has three counters on it immediately. These are four fours. Do a search. Grab Aether Spellbomb for an extra layer of protection. Play Wasteland, Wasteland the Bayou, yeah, and then I get to like activate this as well, uh, that's 4-0, we're playing for a trophy. Okay, so I can play Currency Converter on turn 1 and Grief, and then Emery on turn 2, not have Witherbloom command mana, I, I don't think this hand is sexy. Ah. This, this one raises an eyebrow. Uh, I think I keep this getting rid of one Urza Saga. I'm not going to claim that this is the best hand in the world or anything, but life from, in, life from the loaming myself into an accidental reanimation target would be cool. And, like, the Wasteland gives me something real to do with life from the loam, as does Urza Saga in the meantime until that happens, because I really only have one just absolutely fire reanimation target in the form of a Traxa. And the Awakener's fine if I already have, like, some tokens in play or something. Okay. Well, good news for Phil fans. It is fucking Wasteland o'clock, and I am the mayor of the Wastelands. Upkeep? Probably upkeep. Spirit Guide crop rotation is a thing. Not this time. Uh, that's fine. Before I fetch, I'm going to confirm that I have a basic forest in my deck. I do. So, fetch. The basic forest's a little weird, but I'm about to get basic swamp as well. Uh, other colors be damned. This is playing around this is what actually matters right now. And I have other lines such as reanimate troll here, but I would just like my wasteland back, please. And then next turn I can wasteland a card, including my opponent's wasteland, and then reanimate the troll to get a clock to back this up. Sure. A mulch. Oh, so this is full on lands. My opponent doesn't get the mana bond, they get the rest. Uh, notably, not green mana. Uh, one of those might just be discarded right away. I would not be surprised if the tabernacle gets discarded. Oh, a life from the loam gets discarded. I am fine dredging. So let's wasteland, take out the Yavamaya. That is providing green sources. Now, do I want to reanimate? Like, do I want to start clocking? That's probably fine. Let's just get this into play and have a safety net in play. 
Like I can cast Life from the Loam and get Wasteland back next turn. Um, this opens up a window where I can get Bojuka Bogged off the Wasteland. This feels pretty important, though. Um, this is fine. So like, oh, Mox Diamond's great. One, two, three. One, two. Wasteland. Take out the maze. Play a Mox Diamond. I'll discard a colorless land here. I want to keep some degree of flexibility of colors in case something like Rashadon Port gets involved. I think the scariest thing for me right now are cards like Mana Bond and uh, b -b 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 Exploration that allow my opponent to dump multiple lands into play at the same time. Otherwise, their one land drop a turn doesn't just keep up with what I'm doing. Wasteland, Urza's Saga. One, two, play Wasteland. Wasteland Maze, go to Punchies, do big Punchies. Opponents at eight. And they don't really get to dig themselves out with Life from the Loam without access to something like an Exploration or Mana Bond. Yeah, this is what they need. Unclear whether or not even this will be enough. Because the fastest way for them to win is just going to be negated by Bell Bomb. I'll pay. I will continue to dredge. Uh, let's just go to punchies. Do punchies. Opponent goes to two. Bowmasters will finish them off in the not too distant future. However, I believe it is correct to not give my opponent access to green mana if I can help it. So let's stay the course here and continue to wasteland. I don't want some sort of crop rotation for Glacial Chasm nonsense to mess me up. And again, I don't care about Merit Lage. I've got that covered with Spellbomb, and, like, this thing has Menace on crack. Very nice. One more W for a trophy. Ithing Needle, good. Leovold, good. Terra Sunder, playable. Opposition Agent, playable. Leyline of the Void, playable. Probably not going to Hercules Recall. I'll think about it. Because, like, Urza Saga tokens and Moxon and stuff are relevant. Boarded this out every round. Probably think it's correct to do it again. It helps a little bit with Maze of Ith stuff. My Entombs are probably for Life from the Loam in this matchup. Like, Atraxa is bounceable via Caracas. It's unclear how much power this is going to produce. My reanimates are kind of mid. Let's take a Trax out. Let's take some number of reanimates out. This replaces some threats. Need these. The ley lines are still probably good enough. I'm gonna say Shadow Spear can go. I'm gonna say Mox Opal and Bobble are expendable. Let's go down a grief. I want these more as four mana threats than I do. Just, like, grief, reanimate, scam, try to steal a win. Let's try this. I think this is going to be harder than the, like, Turbo Depths we faced earlier. I mean, I'm not going to say no to this hand. Like, this just cycles for land two and produces a six-power creature very quickly while shutting off life from the loam-based synergies. The mana bond and exploration based stuff can still happen, um, but hopefully this is fine. Sure, there's a basic whale is a thing that I can't cast if I play this. I think that's fine. Well, let's just play this and pass with the intention of cycling. That can get me another basic. We are doing the winding way thing. Bog. Uh, so relatively speaking, that was a mess. I'm going to do Troll Reanimate in a single turn cycle. Tabernacle and Maze. That's annoying. It's like, this would tax my mana if I reanimate the troll, and this would stop the troll. Uh, I'm still going to cycle for a basic, but my plan may be shifting. 
It's weird because like this Pojukabog is a thing. Maybe I'm putting it into play anyway. Um, th this is incredibly awkward, but like I'm a wasteland away from having six damage per turn cycle. And despite the slight awkwardness here, I'm going to put this in play uh, for the sake of my own uh, mana respects because an artifact in play decreases the cost of Emery. And that is absolutely relevant to this game. Uh-huh. So, slightly scary. I'll be paying. Misty. Er. I think I want to approach this like this. This is going to be an underground sea. I think... I start out with the Emery and see where the mill gets me. The mill gets me to Mox Diamond and Wasteland. Okay, those are great. Send them. The issue is, like, Bojuka Bog is a thing. But if I bait things out with Emery, then I get to keep the life from the loam around. I don't know. Like, maybe I pay for troll with Forest and Whale Mode 3. And, like, that ends up being better. Okay. Fog is gone. That's fine. So, I'm going to let Emery die. I'm going to pay to keep this around using forest and cast whale. It's whale off trop. Looking for wasteland in particular. Hey, it's Wasteland. I've already made my land drop, unfortunately. Six dammies. Rats. So I start running into this question of, like, what do I Wasteland? Because I have very relevant targets. Uh, sure. Like, taking the Dark Depths before my opponent finds stage is probably the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's probably what I do. Um, that's fine. I'd love to draw a Mox Diamond. No Dredge. Rest, sure. I think I'm going to play Wasteland and pass. I'm not going to make my opponent keep clicking through it. It's not relevant right now. Uh, so there's still green mana up for crop rotation type stuff. I will just do this in my opponent's upkeep. Take out Dark Depths. Fantastic. And a bond has occurred. So we'll let this trigger happen. I assume it does nothing. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to draw a card here. Uh, this technically kind of drops a layer of protection, but I think I want more looks at Mox Diamond. It just smooths things out for me a lot. I am going to keep this around. Underground C. Wrap Trop Wasteland. Um, this turn it could, I guess, technically be relevant. So, in addition to just Dark Depths Thespian stage accidentally happening, I do have to keep in mind that Field of the Dead also could occur and produce a very large number of tokens at the same time. So that's a thing. I will dredge a life from the loam. I think at this point I do go ahead and attempt to take out Maze of Ith. It is a crop rotation. Is it a new maze? Half of the combo? A Field of the Dead? What are we rocking? It is Field of the Dead. Sure. Cephalid, Urza Saga, Wasteland. I will send in for six points of damage. Now the thing about my opponent's Field of the Dead is that they also do have Tabernacle, so things can get a little weird. Ooh. Okay. Do you have more? You do not have more. Not immediately, anyway. Fine paying this. Uh, no immediate dredge. Ooh. That's a hell of a card. Let's put this into play. Send in with the troll. Opponent can't block as of right now. They go to 7. All pass turn. Opponent will pay for their zombie. Do I junk Field of the Dead now? 
and try to get them to copy it with Thespian Stage, and then they can't produce a Merit Lage? Or do I hold up Opposition Agent? I think I make them commit this now. I could wait, maybe give them one more zombie, and then Wasteland this, cast Life from the Loam, Wasteland this in the same turn cycle. I think I like that better. This is a reveal, not a search. Okay. Another Thespian stage. That certainly complicates things a bit. Let's see, so right now they could go one, two, copy once. And there could be more copying later. I think I'm gonna stay the course and cast Opposition Agent. Like, this is an Ottawara, so it's legendary. But yeah, that's fine. I am at 13 life. Sure. Uh, let's think about this for one second. So, can I pay upkeep of two? Pay one, two. I can't do the double wasteland line if I do this. Tabernacle's a little weird in that regard. A. Dredge, Wasteland, Field of the Dead. My opponent copies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Life from the Loam, Target, Wasteland, Bayou, some other land. I'm going to end up discarding a bunch of these right back. Redeploy Wasteland. Wasteland, Target the other field. Played my land drop. Go to combat. Whack my opponent for six. This isn't a lethal attacker next turn because my opponent can Ottawara it back to my hand. Uh, discard, Verdant, Verdant. So my opponent will pay for two zombies. My opposition agent with Flash is pretty interesting, as is my Urza Saga. Um, this is going to be a tight game, though. How many Bowmasters are currently in my deck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of them. All of them is a good number. So that's gone. Am I dredging? Feels like no. Like, I can wasteland this to never get got by Dark Depths combo, but it seems like drawing an Orcish Bowmasters would be really good. Menace is good. Flash Creature is also good. Does my opponent reasonably play around an opposition agent attack? From one when they're on a two turn clock. They might accidentally just make a zombie that plays around that. Let's go Urza's Saga and Grief. Ugh, stupid Yavamaya making things hard to cast. Uh, crop rotation. I would like to say no to that. But it turns out both Opposition Agent and Grief were solid lines. I guess I can pitch cast Grief in that turn cycle. Oh, I guess by playing my Urza Saga, I open up my opponent to copying that and turning this game into more of a slog. Uh, I mean, their, their Urza Saga is a turn slower than mine. So that's a thing. I'll pay for this. No dredge? No dredge. Bowmasters is such a good draw. Ottawara. Uh, Ottawara represents an attempt at lethal. I will do it. And this has menace and can't be blocked by one zombie token. And folks, that is a 5 0. That's a trophy. So, is this deck good? I don't know. I feel like the deck has problems. The problems didn't matter. I, I don't love the amount of removal that is in this deck list. It feels like I'm just kind of like wiggling my butt around and like narrowly squeezing through problems rather than answering problems. I think I would consider replacing Whale with a hard removal spell. I understand wanting the bottom mode here as it is relevant with the reanimate, entomb, life from the loam stuff. But I think I at least want one real game one hard removal spell of some kind in the deck. Um, the Descend 8 is possible in this deck list. Like, there were a lot of times where we had just a metric shit ton of cards in our graveyard. So, like, 
it is not crazy for the other mode of this to come online where we do get two of these. Or sorry, it's, it's one more most, so we could get all of them. But I'm not, I'm not sure that I'm in love with it. I also learned that it was a sorcery. My bad on that. The deck has a lot of weird backdoor ways to win. I, I feel like this is a deck that like definitely makes you feel smart and like rewards you for taking tight lines and kind of knowing what you're doing. But it's unclear to me how often this stuff is better than just having like more consistent things lower on the curve. So like, is it crazy to just, you know, play a couple more three drops and eliminate some portion of this? I don't know. Like, just about everything in the deck did something relevant in this league. Like, I, I boarded this out just about every round in making room for stuff. That said, there are plenty of game one scenarios where, like, this just, like, oops, combat is over. I just win. I don't know that that happens very much when you hard cast it, but, like, off in Tomb Reanimate, after some Urza Saga stuff, it can definitely just end the game. So, I don't know. The stuff that's in the sideboard is reasonable. The chill might be too narrow even in, like, a Muxus metagame like maybe this is supposed to be just some other generic removal spell since the deck doesn't have very much of that in game one i don't know uh please let me know in the comments down below and i'm sure connor will be in there answering some stuff as well but this one this one gets a thumbs up from me like there are some things that i don't like about the deck but the mana base did pretty well today the deck obviously did well, and I feel like I had a lot of agency, and that my decisions matter, and that is the sign of a good deck, in my opinion. And if you need some cards for this, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRAVENU to save 5% on your next order. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya!